How you doing guys? Steve here again. I've tried making this video quite a few times and every single time it just doesn't come out quite right. So this time I'm not going to edit it, I'm not going to stop the video, I'm just going to shoot from the hip. This is going to be a mental health rant and it might be a little long. <clears throat> so if you're willing to listen, um, I'm going to shed some light on some things that have been pissing me off. Some things you guys may already have heard of and may have already thought of or some things that might be new to your ears and new to your learning, you know, you know, new to your brain. Just a quick summary, about a year ago I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety. I was quickly put on medication, um, which I felt was too quick. I was too quick to jump onto medication. I was weaned off of my medication, um, which was Klonopin, anti-anxiety medication. I was weaned off too quickly, and as a result, I developed major depressive disorder. And I am still continuing taking Klonopin, and now I have to take an antidepressant because my serotonin levels have dropped tremendously, tremendously low, which I believe the root cause is my too quick of a taper off or weaning process off my clonopin. So there's the pre-story. Now this is the stuff that pisses me off. Is the FDA, the pharmaceutical companies, and psychiatrists, and the mental health world, the mental health um, community. So first off, the FDA is the Food and Drug Administration. I don't understand how one group of people, an organization, can be in charge to say what's wrong and what's right with medicine and also what's wrong and what's right with food. Um, who's to say that these key drugs are the only ones that are effective and... I think they're closely tied with the pharmaceutical companies, and I think the FDA's pockets get filled with by the pharmaceutical companies quite often, and it trickles down to the psychiatrists. But first of all, I'd like to say that the FDA, they approve drugs from phar pharmaceutical companies who do studies on the public, people like us. Now, they say they're doing a test on an uh, antidepressant. Now, say the antidepressant is Prozac. Say they did a test on, let's just say, a thousand people with major depressive disorder or moderate to mild depression. Now, we worked for 750 out of 1,000 people. That's great. It's 75%. It worked for 75% of the people. Now... There's 6 billion people in the world. How do you know which medication is right for you? If, or if this one, if Prozac, for example, is the one for you, you don't. That's the sad truth about it. And the FDA doesn't care. The pharmaceutical companies don't care. The psychiatrists, they don't care. Because it's all about the almighty dollar, in my opinion. To my knowledge, there is no scientifically proven fact on what causes major depressive disorder. There are many assumptions and many studies that have been done to try and find the root cause of major depressive disorder, and the only assumption can it only the only assumption comes from low serotonin. Um, Low, nor low norepinephrine and low dopamine, which are pr uh, four, three pretty big um, chemicals in our body that regulate mood. You know, the other one being epinephrine. Now, it boggles my mind that drugs can be approved. You can approve a drug that... Is supposed to cure major depressive disorder when we don't know what the cause of it is already. Now I know antidepressants 
are out there and there's a slim choice on what you can choose. There's not many options and it's kind of scary to think of the options that have been denied by the FDA. But I think that the FDA and the pharmaceutical companies are have have each other's hands in their pockets. You know, it's um I'm sure somebody's been bribed and has pushed a, a drug through without proper research. Now, when I say proper research, I mean more than just studies to see if it's effective. I don't think there's been pro I think there should be regulations on what medicines come out and what they do to do to a person long term and how these med medications affect your brain. They should be published, they should be told to the patients all the information on the drug, what possible side effects you can have, what's the worst possible side effects you can have. Every single medication should have a list, a list of what it could do to you, what it could do to you long term, short term, um, can you become dependent on it, is there going to be unwanted side effects, what side effects may occur. But the problem is, is that the FDA, the pharmaceutical companies, and your psychiatrist don't know. <laughs> they don't know. Now, what pisses me off is, how do you call yourself a doctor? How do you call yourself a professional? If what your work is, is guesswork. Anybody can sit behind the desk and say, well, let's try out this medicine. And let's try out this medicine. Or let's try out this one. Because this one didn't work for you. So people get caught in the trial and error of psychiatric medications. And unfortunately, it's at the cost of you. It's at the cost of your wallet. Um... If you're on disability, it's at the cost of taxpayers. It's at the cost of the public. It's not at the cost of the psychiatrists or pharmaceutical companies or the FDA. It's it's said. The FDA doesn't have to take these medications. The psychiatrists don't. And the pharmaceutical companies don't. The public does. It's... It's kind of, it's sickening. I, I, I've seen some pretty shitty psychiatrists, and the first one that I saw, I told him that I was depressed, and I thought it was more depression than anxiety, and he looked me dead in the eye and said, I won't prescribe you an antidepressant, and you're not depressed, after I just told him I'm depressed. My second psychiatrist I told him I want to get off of Klonopin because I don't think I should have been on it to begin with. And he told me that he doesn't he doesn't deal with patients who take benzodiazepines. And he's not sure on how to get me off of them properly. So he shrugged his shoulders and said, Hey Steve, just take the pill, cut it in half once a week and just get off of it in about four weeks. So I tried it. <laughs> It's fucking hell. Living hell. Trying to get off benzodiazepines. Now, there's so much information out there on, and you, you'll see it in the paper and you see it all over the news, how we're trying to bust people doing heroin and drug dealers with heroin and opiates, opioids. There's so much of the news about that. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, and I know from experience and from re, re, watching people's videos and reading plenty of information and studies, and a benzodiazepine withdrawal is 10,000 times more difficult than any other withdrawal there is known to man. It's the worst. And it's not regulated. There's... No, there's doctors out there who have no fucking clue on how to get you off of medication. They don't know how to get you off of your antidepressant properly. 
and people are forced to learn from learn from for themselves and watch videos and read articles and join forums just to see what worked for Joe Blow and the other thousands of Joe Blows out there who are going through what you're going through while we're sitting here suffering and everyone else is out there the FDA's out there making their money the pharmaceutical companies are out there making their money and the and psychiatrists are out there making your money you go there time after time after time it really pisses me off that the more that I read into this the the sicker it becomes now I'm thankful for antidepressants but I don't think that they're, they're the cure it's all about the almighty dollar now I've stumbled across something called a more holistic approach with amino acids and supplements as far as treating your mood disorder, your mental health disorder. Now, a lot of it comes down to nutrition. A lot of it comes down to getting your levels right. But what sickens me the most is that this is common knowledge that I've been finding out. And there's thousands and thousands of people out there that are treating their depression, treating their anxiety. Some people have treated their schizophrenia, their bipolar disorder, their ADHD, their ADD. They've treated it naturally and not with a man-made chemical, which your body doesn't have in it naturally. It's, it's amazing what people have done and what studies have been done. But what sickens me the most is when you go to research this, <clears throat> more studies have been done on pharmaceutical drugs than they have been done on natural supplements. You know, stuff that God put on earth. If you don't believe in God, stuff that was naturally made. You know, whoever put it here, put it here. But it was here for a reason and it's in your body for a reason. Um, it aggravates the shit out of me that when you go to a psychiatrist and all they do is prescribe medication. They don't ask you how your sleep is, you know, um, how your appetite is. They don't ask you um, anything besides how you're feeling. Are you just still, oh, you're still depressed? Let's up change your medication or let's up your dosage. And come back to me in two weeks and see how you're feeling. Thanks, Doc. I could have done that by myself if you just gave me a prescription pad and a pen. You know, <clears throat> what um, I think needs to be done in this country is there needs to be more regulation. There needs to be <clears throat> less greed, which I know is never going to happen. There needs to be guidelines and regulation like I said for the FDA for pharmaceutical companies for psychiatrists who's overseeing the overseers nobody it's like free reign it's it's sickening when I when I see a pharmaceutical company's name on my medication and the next time I go to pick it up it's from another pharmacy pharmaceutical company and they're all subsidiaries of one or two big pharmaceutical companies Pfizer is one of the hum most humongous most wealthy companies in the entire world <clears throat> and that's just because of medication and there's some guy sitting in I'm sure billion dollar house just and that's just because of medicine, and I'm sure the FDA gets kickbacks. I'm sure the psychiatrist gets kickbacks for prescribing this medication, even though they're not sure which medication is going to work for you. If they sell a certain amount out of their office, no doubt in my mind, do I think that they get a kickback, some type of 
incentive on prescribing medication. My current psychiatrist, I've heard her talk to patients outside of when they come out of the office. She gives them free samples of Rixalti. And this is something that's called an antipsychotic. <clears throat> and it's uh, according to studies and according to psychiatrists, it's supposed to help boost your serotonin and boost your antidepressant. But how? Nobody knows why. But why she keeps pushing this on me, um, I don't understand. I had a DNA test done through her office. And it says right on it that my body can't handle Rexalti. It can't handle SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. I can only handle a handful amount of drugs that won't react neg neg negatively in my body. But I can't tell you how many times she's tried to push Rexalti on me, and every time I have to remind her, Hey, Doc, I can't take that. We ha I had this really expensive test done. It cost $3,500. Just to find out and try and get out of the trial and error. You know, I, I said, fuck it. I've been doing this trial and error for months. I'm still ain't better. I'm still not working. I'm, I feel like shit most days. It sucks. So I said, fuck it. Let's do it. Thirty five hundred bucks. Let's get to the the cure, the cause of the problem. And guess what, guys? Thirty five hundred dollars later, I found a medication that works to the extent that I don't cry every day. I'm still depressed every day. I still get anxiety every day. Now. What I think needs to be done is that there needs to be blood work done for every single patient that has depression. Every single patient that has anxiety, any mood disorder, any mental health <clears throat> disorder. Blood work has to be done because the body is such a complicated machine and there's so many moving parts thousands and thousands of moving parts and systems and ways things work and precursors to make this to make another you know, another compound and make another compound to eventually lead to the final compound it's amazing and what i'm getting into is it, it's I think it's just, I don't blame the psychiatrists all the way, I don't, I don't blame them fully, but I don't think they're fully helping patients, um, I think antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, and every psychiatric medication is prescribed too loosely, and it's not regulated, and it's not overseen properly. I think when someone goes to school to be a psychiatrist that they have to know in order to graduate, in order to get a degree to put up on your fucking office wall, you got to know the ins and outs of every fucking medication, the way to get your patients off the fucking medications properly. How do you consider yourself a fucking professional if you don't fucking know Half the shit, and how you how how your patients are gonna re react to it, and how how do you possibly not know how to get someone off of something, especially the guy I saw doesn't doesn't know how to get me off of clonopin properly. He's been a psychiatrist for fifty something years, and he's ready to retire. How do you come across a, a doctor so naive, so ignorant? You know, it's it's a fucking sick world, you know. And if you're not in it, you, you don't, you don't, you won't understand. It it doesn't make any fucking sense, you know. And the only thing that I can rationalize about this whole thing is just greed. 
you know, psychiatry is guesswork. Pharmaceutical companies are out there for money. <clears throat> it's it's sick. It just I watch YouTube videos all the time of people who try and get are trying to get off the antidepressant, or people who are trying to get off of the benzodiazepine, or people who are trying to get off their psychiatric medication. And they're having such a hard fucking time. Because they're not told that your body becomes dependent on these medications. You're not told anything. There's pharmacies out there who are supposed to give you, by law, a guide on your medicine and possible side effects that you can that can occur when you take this medication. I've been to pharmacies that don't even give you the guide. They don't give you any information. And you can ask them a question about how it's going to help you. And they say, oh, well, didn't you ask your doctor? Your doctor should know. Why the fuck are you a pharmacist? Fuck. That's just a, that's a whole nother rant. But psychiatrists are... Guess, guess doctors, you know, they're less accurate than the fucking weatherman, less accurate than the your average meteorologist. You know that everyone says that, you know that. I don't understand why the weatherman makes so much money when he's only right fifty percent of the time, but I don't understand why psychiatrists make so much money when they're probably only right ten percent of the time. <coughs> I think that um, everything happens for a reason and certain signs pop up and will open your eyes if you're really looking for them. I've come across some new information about amino acids and getting your blood levels right and how simple things like vitamins... And simple things like nutrients and supplements and precursors to precursors to precursors and how things work to be able to build up the necessary chemicals in your brain and your body to run naturally. And... None of this is brought up when you go to a doctor's visit for anti for depression, especially not with psychiatrists. Psychiatrists, they know medications, they know the names of medications, but they don't know if they're going to work for you. They don't know what's the quote-unquote right cocktail of medications. It's all of what you tell them, you know, all of what you experience. And they still get paid regardless Whether you feel like shit, or whether you're happy for five months, or five days, or five minutes, and then the medication doesn't work anymore, then it's on to the next one. What really got me going was seeing the same faces every week, or every two weeks, or every three weeks, whenever my appointments are at the psychiatrist. And... Still seeing the same people with down faces, like frowns, and just, you can tell that they're hurt, and you can tell that they're miserable, and they're looking for every answer, and this, these doctors don't have it. The public has it. And the more you do your research on how your body works, and how nutrition, and exercise, and so many vitamins and minerals and nutrients and anything that's in your body, if it's off, it can affect so much. Vitamin Ds and vitamin Bs and omega-3s. So many, so many things. Phosphorus, magnesium, you know, these things are, it sounds like that you're looking at a periodic lab table, you know, a periodic Elements table, whatever the fuck it's called, but it's it, may, it all makes sense. It's all science. It's your body's 
one big scientific swimming pool. And if something's out of whack, then something might not click together right. <sighs> Anyways, guys, I know this rant's been pretty long. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that I'm not grateful for the medication. But I'm pissed off about how it all works. And I want to apologize to anyone out there who's having a hard time. Because <clears throat> there's not a lot of people who understand what you're going through. And there's not a lot of people who understand mental health. I had no idea how in depth and what goes on before I if before I got into it before I was in it myself. I think that um everything happens for a reason. But I think that that there's also a cure for every single thing that's alive. Because I think that everything can be conquered, even the greatest of illnesses. And there's, with all the technology that we have, there's got to be ways to fix things. There's got to be different ways. We've been going, I think we've been going on about mental health the wrong way for decades. Now I can go on all night and I probably repeat myself plenty of times. But if you've made it to the end of this video and you're taking medications and you feel that they're not working for you anymore or not working for you as well as they should be or maybe you just feel numb on them and you would like to feel some emotion again, do yourself a favor go on Google, go on YouTube, research nutrients and natural ways to heal whatever mood disorder you may have. Because I'm telling you guys, there's so much information out there, so much stuff that I haven't even read, so much stuff that I haven't even watched, and there's so much stuff that my head spins every time I get really deep into it because I see how closely everything is connected inside our body that can throw off our that can throw off our our chemical balance and make you experience a chemical imbalance which is most likely the cause of what's that what's ever going on with you and there's more than likely a natural fix to this what whatever you have you know, something may be hereditary, you know, some people might have hereditary depression or hereditary, you know, um, multiple, person multiple personality disorder, or it might be hereditary that you're schizophrenic or bipolar, but I think and I strongly feel, guys, that there's a better way. There's a more natural way. So go look into your amino acids, your vitamin Ds. Go look into your your nutrition. Get some fucking blood work done. Especially if you're on an antidepressant or thinking about going on an antidepressant. Do your fucking research. If you if you have bad anxiety, do your do your research. If you hear voices in your head, do your research. If you if you have ADHD, you can't sit still, you can't concentrate. Do your fucking research. I mean, that one, that last one's kind of an oxymoron. Sorry, but if you have ADHD, I know it's gonna be hard for you to do your research. But have someone else do it for you, you know, because maybe you can't concentrate that well. But if you're if you're fed up enough, like I am, you'll do your research. You'll try something else out. And I've come across so much information online and more. Things like 5-HTP 
L-tryptophan, L-tyrosine, phenylalanine, DHA, 5-HIAA, all these fucking things, omega-3, you know, how our body, we consume 20 to 1 bad fats to good fats, that's a, a terrible ratio, I can go on all night, guys. But I want you guys to seriously look into your illness and not through a medication standpoint, but through more of a supplemental standpoint, a more nutritional standpoint, and don't stop fighting and find that answer. Get off. Uh, I, my main goal is to get off my medication, to feel normal again, to feel love and laughter and anger, like true anger, and feel true emotion again, instead of trying to fake it, because I feel like that's what I'm doing on my medication, is faking it, and I tell people that I'm fine, and I tell people that I'm getting there, and I'm, I'm probably lying through my teeth, so, looks like my phone's about to die, but I just want to leave you guys with one message, <clears throat> just because a doctor has a, a degree does not make them any more better than you are. Just because you're on medication doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. Don't feel bad that you have to take medication to feel better. But also don't be ignorant to think that medication is going to be it for you for the rest of your life. Try something new. Change something in your life. Change how you've looked at your mood disorder, your mental health disorder. Change it. Because I know that I'm changing how I look at mine. And I know that I'm changing how I'm going to treat mine. Whether it be with my doctor's help or not. Because I'm fed up with it. Like I tell you guys all the time, you keep your fucking heads up, you keep fucking fighting, keep fucking surviving, and you keep doing your fucking research. You're the only one who's going to help yourself. Good luck with your mood disorders, guys. If you have any questions for me, shoot me a like, shoot me a comment, subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing some more rants and some... Giving you some more information as I come along and find out more things. I love everybody and I'm, I'm sorry you're going through hell. And I'm sorry the mental health system really sucks. I'll talk to you guys later.